looking through Laurel Forest, we begin another episode of Pokemon Prism. Hey everybody, I'm Diogen Z. In the last episode, we explored Laurel Forest. We cleared the path for this little Charmander here, made sure that it didn't have to go through the water and extinguish its flame, which if you don't know Pokemon well, Charmander dies if its flame is totally extinguished. So, we helped him out. And now we're gonna check out what this cave has to offer because there was a Charizard blocking the way. And voila, more Charizards! I often question my lover's raising methods, but you must understand, this is tradition in his family. Tradition? What's tradition? I'm disappointed in my son, he needed help from someone else to get home rather than just simply swimming across with his tail out of the water. Wow, that's some pretty harsh standards. Shit. Your son has to risk his neck just to get home? I really don't think Charmanders are supposed to be partially water types. Just saying. Uh, so, this guy had an encounter with the scientists. Anyway, I remember one of them complaining about losing a coupon. So maybe it's in that tunnel. I blocked it off to keep my son from exploring that human-made disaster. But if you want to go down there and play with whatever those pathetic humans made, be my guest. I'll clear it for you, because, well, only I can. Oh, really? <laughs> so, I guess there's no strength HM in this game, if we can't move boulders ourselves. Uh, so, we gotta find that lab coupon now. All about honor in the Charizard family. You've got a rough life ahead of you, Charmander. It's no wonder Charmeleon turns out to be so pissed off. What is this button? Hmm, it's already been pushed in. Oh, okay. I'm pushing the buttons in. I thought it was saying the button was already pushed in. Uh, I think I know where we gotta get to. That little island over there is probably where the lab coupon is is going to be. So apparently these coupons are worth something. Don't want to go in that hole right there. Aha! And we're going to find out probably in this episode what these coupons are all for. Maybe if we hand them over to the scientists, they'll happily give us all the Pokemon back. Just be like, look, we got all your special coupons. Go back to the lab. Go fiddle with some fossils or something, but stop stealing other people's Pokemon. It's not right! Okay, and he doesn't say anything special. He's not going to clear out that cracked rock way. That other boulder path that we cannot break through. And uh, this is where the scientists are. The scientists are... I kind of did a little cut there, but... Where the scientists are, they were right up ahead past that Charizard. And basically, these scientists kicked my ass almost every time with that ditto. But you just keep going past where that Charizard was, and you'll make it up into here. And now we can save the Pokemon! Oh, jeez. Looks like Team Rocket Generators. Oh, so they got you too. What? You took care of their Pokemon? That's pretty good, but I'm not sure I want to go back. I just can't stand my owner. What do you mean you saw lots of needles when you went in? Okay, sure. Let's get out of here. Thank you for rescuing it. It'll be at my gym if you need me. Oh, I'll be at my gym, not it. Idiot. Oh, look at this PC. This is a very simple way for us to quickly heal our Pokemon if we wanted to. Not like it matters now. We need to head back to the gym in Laurel City to face Brooklyn! Yes, but those scientists are pretty easily handled, except for the Ditto, because it transforms into Larvitar, or in my case, Pupitar. 
and uh, it's kind of hard to defeat. Interesting though, they don't change the sprite from Larvitar to Pupitar when I evolve. I noticed that. I stay Larvitar form in sprite, so I guess they're not going to have a Tyranitar sprite running around later in the game. Or maybe they will. Maybe they just haven't programmed it yet. Do keep in mind, people, Prism is in beta. Alright, I think we are all set to take on Brooklyn. The Laurel City Gym Leader. Let's just make sure we have our Pokemon in order. I don't think we want to have a Rock type up in the front, but... Uh, let's see. Gligar. You... We'll start out with Swellow, just because it's high-leveled, it's a flying type, and I do believe Brooklyn is water type. Yep, Totodile. Later I'm going to put some makeup on it and make it look very pretty and hold it all day long. Oh right, you want my badge? Well fine, let's get this over with. Do remember, she's the bitchy gym leader, as the uh, assistant told you on the way in. Brooklyn sent out? Wilmer! Seems like the kids these days are listening to that dubstep. Sounds like whale step. <laughs> oh wow. That was nice. Critical hit in one shot. Oh, roll out. Not so nice. You won't survive though! So we're facing level 20 Pokemon in here, guys. Do take note of that to make sure if you're pokes are not high leveled enough, you might want to go train at the forest. Hmm. I think we're okay. We've got mostly 20s, 25s, in between that range, but Lantern, yeah, Suelo's not going to stand a chance. I'm only going out with Rex here because I'm hoping that being a Pupita gives it extra defense. Hmm. That thing's got pretty bulky stats, it seems, though. The fat blubber fish of the electrical sea. Eh, and it's super effective to me. I do believe we're gonna have to switch it up. Okay, we'll go water versus water. You fight fire with fire, why not liquid with liquid? Blubber versus blubber. Thick fat attack. Maru could eventually learn a nasty body slam. It can do rollout, right? I don't see why it couldn't learn Body Slam. No, I'm confuzzled! Don't get hurt, don't get hurt, don't get hurt, don't get hurt. Ah, uh, yes! Rollout! Aw, oh, man. Launching a rollout is kind of dangerous when you have confusion stats on you. E come on, hit with rollout. Yes! But my Maru is staying steadfast. We can get one more rollout at three times powered up, because do keep in mind, if it hits in consecutive hits, it powers up each time. Can we do it? No! Damn, we were so close to killing that lantern. Now when I start rollout again, it's gonna be at the base power of one rollout. See? Much weaker than if I hit it with three rollout power. But now I'm not confused anymore. And you're done, bitch! I'm surprised to see that she didn't use Totodile. That's very interesting. Fine, take this gram of plastic. <laughs> oh man, the gym leaders in this game are hilarious. Okay, for some reason the Gulf Badge will let your Pokemon use Strength out of battle. Oh, so there is Strength. That Charizard was leading us on in the wrong way in that cave, saying he was the only one who could move boulders. Bullshit. When we get the Strength HM, we will be able to as well. We have Tyranitar in our future, after all. And we also get TM18 for our troubles. Not a bad gym battle. Huh, what's this? Totodile wants to join my party. Yes! Oh, this is excellent. We're gonna name him... 
Hydraulic. Oh, this is excellent. Man, that's so crazy. I'm loving how this game, it starts you off bare minimum with only Larvitar. And you gotta kind of work around that being a rock type and going through caves with Geodudes. You have to work at that kind of weakness and type disadvantage. Just in type resistance. But then they start piling on Chikoritas and Cyndaquils and... Well, have we seen Chikorita yet? No, I don't believe so. We've battled Chikoritas before, but... We have Cyndaquil, now Totodile. I think it is excellent. And let's see what else we can do in this town real quick before we end this. And why I am frozen here, I do not know. There we go. So let's take a look. Switch up Hydraulic to the top because he starts out at level 10. Let's see if we could train him quickly around the city. I don't think there is anything, but we'll go to the point where the next adventure will start. Oh, who knows? Maybe there are wild Pokemon in this cavern. Nope. But once again, we have the have these labyrinths. That's something that reappears in Prism quite often. Is the maze theme, whether it's in the forest or in the caves. And I think it's a cool addition. It's a nice touch and really fun to implement the Pokemon RPG mechanic with. That's what I've mentioned before in past live casts and things like that. That Pokemon as the main company should really experiment with different storylines. I mean, you've got these wonderful mechanics that Pokemon has passed on throughout the ages. You could take any of them. You could take 5th gen mechanics, even now here, 2nd gen mechanics, and do so much with it. It's astounding. And you could take people on completely different type of story arcs than what's just traditional of going to a laboratory, getting a starter, going out and defeating the gyms, and then defeating the League. Ah, the sacred fish. Yes, it was me who aligned the rocks to look like the Pokemon I idolized. Oh wow, guys, rewind and see Magikarp you're thinking? That's the ancient fish? Wow, rewind this video and see if you could see the outline of Magikarp within those rocks. I didn't even realize that. Me and my ancestor hope every day that this fish will return to its former glory. What do you mean, Gyarados? Oh, really? <laughs> wow, I, I was just asking that, and I can't believe it, it actually read that out. Oh, you want to make it through the forest? Yes, I need to know about this ancient fish, old man. Well, I'll tell you that fellow to move. I'll tell that fellow to move if you complete one small task. I have the ability to change you into the Magikarp. What? We'll experience what it's like to be Magikarp? And navigate through rapids? Oh boy, guys. Tune in next time to Pokemon Prism Walkthrough when we become Magikarp and navigate through the water maze.